Hi, as Barb mentioned, I am going to give a par parental perspective um, for MSA. I'm taking you out of the classroom and bringing you into our home, uh, which is, you know, the beauty of homeschooling, right? Being able to have the flexibility of doing different things, different places. Um, I just, I want to introduce myself. I'm Julie Rainbow and I have three kids at Mount Sophia. Uh, Jennifer, who's graduating this year, Jacob, who is a junior, and Catherine, who is a freshman. Um, we came to Mount Sophia uh, about four years ago, came to an interest meeting, and I uh, found that Mount Sophia seemed to check all of my boxes that I was trying to check. I had been previously to another school, where as I sat and listened, I'm like, oh no, this is not gonna work. They um, would not let me have the ability to bring in my own classes, do my own thing. Under their diploma program, they basically said, you have to take all of our classes and we only put the classes that you take with us on your transcript. And at the time, Jacob's taken an AP computer science A exam and passed the test. And I'm like, you actually wouldn't put that on there. And they just said, no, it has to be from our school. So I really was thinking this type of program was not gonna work. Um, and then I came and sat in the interest meeting and I was like, okay, this is exactly, this is exactly what I'm looking for. The ability to pick and choose which classes I'm gonna take, uh, the ability to do what I want at home, um, and to really have the guidance on how I can level things up even from home. Um, there, there's just been tremendous opportunity that we have had because of coming to Mount Sophia. One aspect of this opportunity or this experience has been um, when I came in and decided, okay, this is going to work for us. I brought my daughter, Jennifer, who at the time was going to be a freshman the next year. I brought her in for a tour and she is deeply shy at the time. Um, and she was kind of tucked under me the whole time. Um, didn't really want to be there. And we had a couple of the kids at the time run up to us and say, hi, welcome to Mount Sophia. Are you going to join the swim team? And I'm like, I'm so sorry. She's just really shy. And one of the kids were like, you know what's funny is I used to be really shy. He said, when I first started here, my mom would actually have to pry me out of the back of the car to be able to get me into the school. And look at me now, I'm graduating this year. I love debate and I'm going um, you know, on to do all of these things. And I would have been petrified, I think in the past, but I'm actually feeling very confident and very excited. You're gonna love it here. And I just was like, this is so perfect. And I come out and we're driving home and I'm like, Jennifer, what did you think? And she's just like, that was suspicious. I just, they were too nice. And I'm just like, Jennifer, you know, this is, this is where you're going to be. This is where they want to see you be. They want to see you seeing people scared and come up and help them feel better to be there. That's going to be something they're going to expect from you someday. It's not suspicious. It's beautiful. It's a process, you know, of, of somebody that needed help in the past now being able to help others. And so, you know, that was kind of our initial conversation. And I just want to say the evolution of Jennifer through this has been tremendous. She is the greeter. She is the one who looks around to see if somebody is feeling left out or uncomfortable. And she is, um, you know, she's somebody that will really now go out of her way for others to help them feel comfortable. And the evolution of that process has been so neat for me as a mom to watch. Much more self-confident. She's gained so much from being in rhetoric and choir, um, swimming, some science Olympiad math, <laughs> but she's just gained so much from having that exposure and pulling her out of her comfort zones on a regular basis on top of all of the friendships that she's made. Um, and then I'll move on to uh, my Jacob. 
Jacob um, said no to the swim team his first year. He was a, a matriculated eighth grader his, fresh, uh, his eighth grade year. Could have joined the swim team along with Jennifer, but absolutely hated pools, would not swim, had absolutely no interest in it. Jennifer kept pressing. She did it the first year and she loved it. And she kept pressing Jacob. She said, you have to make him do it, mom. You have to make him do it. Well, this is a kid that even when they took swim lessons, he wouldn't join. He hates swimming pools. So he had no idea how to swim. And I'm just like, there's no chance I'm putting Jacob on the swim team, Jen, when he can't swim. I mean, he like actually doesn't know how to swim. He would embarrass himself terribly. So she ended up saying, just make him manage. And I was filling out the paperwork and I said, Jacob, do you want to manage? And he said to a friend that he happened to be chatting on on Discord, playing some game. He said, hey, are you going to be managing the swim team this year? Because he had previously been a manager. And the gentleman said, yeah, yeah, you should do it. And Jacob said, okay, okay, I'll, I'll manage. I sign him up as the manager. He goes in and watches the first couple of swim meets and he realizes how beautiful this team is. You have somebody that's two or three laps behind and the whole place is lit up cheering for them. And he realized it was just a safe place. He came out of a particular swim meet where that was pretty pronounced um, a couple of times and he got into the back of the car and he said, I'm joining the swim team. I'm like, honestly petrified because he really is not a good swimmer at all. And he says, mom, I'm a freshman. I have time to learn, you know? So he goes on, he DQ'd like every race they put him in. I'm not kidding. He really did. He, I think he scored one and a half points that first year total for the team. <laughs> and that was because of a relay that he was on that somehow he didn't disqualify. Um, he ended up taking lessons over the summer, worked really hard, and now uh, he has, I think he's got four of the top 16 records um, in Mount Sophia's history um, in four different strokes. And he made, um, he was asked, he's made it to the state's floor the last two years. <laughs> and he's been asked, uh, he was asked this last year to be a captain of the team. And that was just, that's an unbelievable progression from a kid who didn't have the confidence to even be in the water to a kid who's captain of the swim team that's now, you know, having records um, for Mount Sophia. And it's just been a beautiful progression, again, to watch. Um, your kids will grow here. They will grow here in so many ways. They will grow spiritually. They will grow academically. They will grow the socially that it's amazing amazing to watch the progression that happens to them um just through the support the deep support of the staff the teachers the peers um the parents it's it's an amazing environment going back to where i mentioned that i had taken jennifer in we left there, I knew I was gonna sign Jen up, but the reality is I still was a bit skeptical and what's that's where Jen gets it, I'll just say that. Um, but I really felt like I was going to run into situations where my classes for whatever reason weren't really gonna meet the requirements or weren't gonna match the criteria and that really I probably should just go ahead and take that class. And Mount Sophia, you know, since it didn't really have this or didn't include that or what have you. And I went to the meeting with Marilyn Group. Uh, she does the ninth and 10th grade. And she was so phenomenal. Like she came up with ideas on, okay, so you're saying that you did that as a level, what I would consider a level three, this is the hours that you had. If you wanted, you could have them over the next year watch this or read this or add this amount of time and you could actually level that up if they want to they don't have to but they could if they wanted um or oh this subject well you don't you don't have to take that here if that doesn't work for you we actually have some books in our library that would work really well if you want to look at those or check those out i mean like so fantastic so fantastic and i i 
I walked out of there so elated knowing that I actually had people thinking outside of the box, like I wanna think outside of the box, coming up with ways to create these, these creative, neat learning experiences for our kids. And they're just so deeply supportive of that. And I knew that it was the right place for us at that point. I just wanna say, um, I feel like that has been completely, over the years, it's been completely and utterly the case. I mean, they have never let me down. Um, they have always come up with great ideas or accepted my ideas. Um, and then I wanna add that when we had the transition, um, like every school did for coronavirus, our school did not miss a beat. Like we went from finding out on Saturday that there was not any school on Monday physically to we were online on Monday and we did not miss a beat. Our schedule did not change at all. We just went straight from walking into class to walking to our computers and not me, but the kids, and they got all of their classwork completed exactly when they were supposed to be completed. They did not miss a beat. They even had tank time for the kids on Zoom, uh, prayer time. They, it was so unbelievable, the transition, so seamless. And I'm watching all of my friends talk about how their schools have completely gone off the grid trying to pull together some program to figure out how they're gonna teach them. And then I find out three weeks later, kids are starting back up to start learning online. And I'm like, this is gonna be a disaster. You're going to take kids who have been playing video games for the last three weeks probably, and make them sit and learn online all day. Like for us, at least it was just the hour of the class that they had. These guys went from nothing to all day, every day, from my understanding. So I was just like, oh, those poor kids, we are so lucky. So um, I just really want to also stress the beauty of Maryland Group, which I've already mentioned, and Barb Varnell. Barb Varnell is extremely experienced at getting our students into wherever they wanna go. She is the junior senior um, advisor, and she is somebody who really thinks outside of the box, but also knows a lot about what people are looking for, what actually hurts them, um, or could hurt them. Um, there are so many things that I was so sure of that I was going to do that she gave me multiple situations and scenarios as to why maybe I don't want to go that direction. Um, and I'm, th I'm so thankful for the advice that she's given me. Um, there's multiple times where she's really just saved me in this, in this journey. Um, and her advice has been so sound and so helpful. And truly, if you're trying to decide if you want to do the diploma program or not, I would say the biggest asset that this school has, and yes, their teachers are massive assets, like the teachers are tremendous, all of the classes are great, but the diploma program, having the advisement of Marilyn and Barb is an un like you can't you can't put a price on how valuable that is and I would highly recommend you go with the diploma program and you know if you want to do sports or certain activities you've got to do the diploma program but if you want just to have Barb and Marilyn available to you like all the time for different things different questions assisting with your CVs helping you get through the process of applying to college or wherever, whatever you're wanting to do. Um, and that's the other thing I wanna stress, they don't railroad everybody into a college path. If somebody doesn't plan on going to college, they're paying attention to that and they are getting them ready for whatever it is that they're going to be going into at a later time. They're, they're, they're preparing them for that path. So they, they really just work with each student individually, independently, um, and make sure that they're on the right path uh, for what they're wanting to do. Um, but it's invaluable. They're truly an asset to Mount Sophia and to our entire community, frankly. Um, 
the teachers, the one thing I love about the teachers is that we really find ourselves, or I find at Mount Sophia, so many different students name so many different teachers as their favorite teachers. And I remember when I went to school, we had a favorite teacher, like everybody's favorite teacher was the same person really, for the most part. And that's one thing that stood out to me is how many people have different teachers that they just love. And I think that that just speaks volumes for the school. And if you want to meet all the teachers, please go to the website and look at the teachers' uh, bios. They have all, most of them have their bios online. Um, and you can look at the grid online and you can see it's a class grid. You can see who's teaching a class and then you can go over to the teacher page and look at that and just kind of get to know your teacher a little bit, see, your, see their picture um, and see their bio and just feel like you, you know them a little bit more from that. I highly recommend you do that because it just would, and make sure your kid does that before they go into the class. I think that would be good for them to do. Um, I guess last but not least, I just, I really want to offer myself up as someone who is um, available to you. If you want to just talk to a parent who's living and breathing this right now, um, I'm more than welcome to have a conversation with you and to just give you my experiences on different things. Um, so I just, I just would like to offer myself up. If you would like for one of my children to help with the, just the, the process of, of working themselves into Mount Sophia, uh, socially or what have you, call on us to do that. Jacob um, is very, very good, uh, as well as is Kate very good. I'm not mentioning Jennifer because she will be graduated. <laughs> so, But Jacob and Kate are both very, very much into making sure all the students have a good transition there. They will introduce them to a lot of different people. They'll try to just make sure that they're always having somebody available to them. Um, they'll keep an eye on them in the tank or what have you, just to make sure they're not, you know, sitting there by themselves or seeming like, you know, they're troubled or what have you. Um, so just please reach out. Please know that we're here um, as just a team and we really love, we love Mount Sophia and we hope that you'll join Mount Sophia. And I'm thankful that you took the time to watch this. Thanks so much.